Hi, I'm Barbara Best. And I'm Nancy Rizzuto. And we're both founding partners and principals of Capstrat. And we're also founders of the Capstrat Women's Forum. You know, the core mission of our Women's Forum is to help women succeed in life, personally, professionally, and especially financially. And we are so passionate about educating, engaging, and empowering women on all aspects of their life. So thanks for being here, and we hope you enjoy the program. So let's jump right in. I'm going to start by taking a page out of Simon Sinek's book and say, let's start with why. Why do we want more courage? It's courage that allows us to step out of our comfort zone. We heard a lot about that on the chat. Step out of our comfort zone and do more and be more and ultimately have more impact. As you said, I have been working with high potential talent for about 13 years. And no matter what we're working on, when you peel away the layers, often what I hear is, Brenda, I I'd like to have more influence and impact in my organization and in my life. That impact piece. And there's no better way to get there than to start exercising your courage muscle more frequently and with more intentionality. So that's what today's about. We're gonna take this giant topic of courage, we're gonna whittle it down. And my hope is that you get a couple of things a new idea, a strategy, a framework, and a way to apply it immediately that'll have a big app impact for you. So I love that you're already embracing the chat. Uh, I joke that one of the really good things that came out of the pandemic is people <laughs> love to chat now. <laughs> Two years ago, you asked people to put something in the chat. Crickets. 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 <laughs> now we're all about the chat. And that's how we're gonna stay connected today. And I really appreciate that engagement. So indulge me, go to the chat and share a little bit about what does courage look like to you, right? Just to get our heads in the game. Is it a person? Is it an adjective? Is it an activity? All I know is when this invitation got put out on LinkedIn, we had a huge response. <laughs> so it had to resonate at some level. So. Barbara, what are we seeing? Yeah, courage to be seen, uh, mm. right? Uh, to pivot in my next career shift. Nice. Being scared and stepping out of my comfort zone. Yes. Taking on a new CEO role. Wow, yeah. that is, absolutely. <laughs> I love this, B2B sales calls. <laughs> right? <laughs> there you go. Speaking, uh, speaking up, yeah. taking risks. Yeah, courage to apply for leadership roles. Beautiful. Beautiful. Figuring out how to retire. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Well, so I appreciate that. A couple of things we want to pull out of that. Courage means different things to different people. Mm -hmm. And courage is situational. So like I said, I'm going to give you some tools, some frameworks, but it's going to be up to you to dial into what you need out of this right now. So here's my intent for our time together. I want us to help to understand the difference between competence and courage. Uh, again, the, in the description, in the differentiation, I think we alter our expectations and can increase our chance of success. We're gonna talk a little bit about the old amygdala hijack, what we're working against. I like to refer to it as a lizard brain. We're gonna just try to do one or two things. Hopefully we're gonna laugh a little and you're gonna have the opportunity to network with others. So I recognize this is a lunch program. Uh, if you need to go off camera to finish your salad, take care of whatever you need to, that's fine. I just invite you to be back and be as fully present as you can uh, in about 20 minutes when we actually are gonna to go to breakout rooms and give you a chance to be in conversation with other leaders. And last but not least, of course, I'm going to make you uh, set some commitments and maybe even grab an accountability partner. So let's go to Brene Brown's differentiation. She talks about courage is thriving under uncertainty, while confidence is the assessment afterwards. In other words, you can't get to confidence without the courage to try something for the first time. Often as I'm getting acquainted with um, coaching clients, they'll say, they'll kind of lean in and say, you know, Brenda, 
if I'm being honest, I don't really feel 100% confident around X, speaking to large groups, asking the difficult question at the executive committee, giving really hard feedback, whatever that is. And I'll kind of push back on them a little bit. And I'll say, you know, is that about confidence or is it about courage? And oftentimes we'll agree that it's about courage, which makes sense because why would you have confidence around something that you've never done before or you don't have a ton of experience with? Really, it's about those first steps of courage, engaging in it and getting over the hump. So I think if we can think about that a little bit differently, we can change the expectations we have for ourselves and give ourselves a little more leadership grace around courage. So I'm a visual learner. So let me put it to you like this. If this is a continuum of competence, it starts with commitment. You've got to decide where and when you want to be courageous, when it's important. The discomfort, the vulnerability, all the things we talked about on the chat, the embarrassment, you've kind of got to know that that's part of how this happens and that's okay. The courage piece are those first steps, the first pieces of action that you move forward on. That's when the skill building, the capabilities start to accrue and you can get to competence. But what I see happening is culturally, just in general, we get so focused on the outcome, waiting to have the, the confidence that we may miss our opportunity. So thinking of it this way, I think allows us and, and really encourages us to be even more courageous sooner. So we're gonna pause a little bit because we don't do enough of that as women. And I want you to think about what brought you here. Again, giant topic, but what we're trying to do is get down to some impactful action. So I want you to kind of name your challenge for yourself, okay? It could be, let me just get your juices flowing. It could be having a radically candid conversation with dot, 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 that key coworker, your sister, your boss. Maybe it's something more personal, signing up to play in the golf tournament, to run the marathon, to whatever, but do it for the first time. Maybe it's asking for what you're worth. That came up in our chat to start. As women, we don't ask enough. I know that to be true. I just had the opportunity, here's a wonderful book recommendation for you. Um, Alexandra Carter, she's from Columbia. She wrote the book, Ask for More. And while it's a negotiation book, what it does is it gives some great guidance around how do we articulate our value? So maybe it's about asking more directly for something. Or as uh, Barbara highlighted, coming out of this pandemic, our work life is all a jumble. Maybe it's setting boundaries with you fill in the blank. So I'm gonna give you 30 seconds, and I'm going to ask, jot this down, capture it for yourself, because that's going to be our starting point. Great. All right, so we've all We've all zeroed in on something. So we all know we want it. We understand that's gonna allow us to have more impact and influence. So what gets in our way? Unfortunately, it's ourselves. <laughs> it's how we are hardwired as humans. You may, you may all be familiar with the idea of an amygdala hijack. The amygdala is what sits at the base of our, in our limbic system. And it is what allows us to stay safe. Its whole purpose is to scan the environment for threats. Now, this came in really handy 
thousands of years ago when there were a lot of threats. Um, think warring tribes, wild animals who want to eat you, et cetera. But the problem is, while our human brain is quite amazing, we haven't had a lot of soft grade, so, uh, software upgrades, I like to say. So the way we perceive things, it's, it could be a real threat, like a saber-toothed tiger, or it could be a perceived threat. Think snarky email from our boss, a threat to our ego or our psychological safety. But what happens is the same, the same physical response when we get triggered. The reason I bring this up is when we're trying to step into our courage is exactly when our body sometimes is working against us, sensing danger or fear. So we've got to be conscious of it in order to be able to counteract it. I I had a situation, I was acutely aware of this uh, just a few weeks ago. I, I was working with a colleague. We were setting up a two and a half hour uh, Zoom training, kind of a technical training. And as we were getting ready, 45 people in the waiting room, everything was going great. My phone rang and I heard the head of learning and development's voice which sounded a little breathy. <laughs> and she said, uh, uh, Brenda, um, I, think, I think there's a little issue. I think when my admin put the invite out, it was only for 90 minutes. Is that a problem? There I sat, four minutes to launching this thing, 50 people in the waiting room, two and a half hours of content. I could feel the cortisol cocktail kick off, go through my veins, the sweat, the heart rate, and I, I quickly adjusted. I thought, you've got to take control of this physically and then mentally. I said, you know, I'm going to go off video for a second and, and think, just a second. I went off the video and I got physically grounded. So when we're in these courage moments, I think it's really important to realize you've got more control than you think. So put my feet on the ground, started doing the diaphragmatic breathing, you know, the four breaths in, the Buddha breath, holding it the four, four seconds out, just to get myself out of this reactive state and back into executive function. Talked to my colleague, we were able to adjust, turn things into a leave behind, it was fine. But I was just so aware in that moment how I had to flip it and take more control. Because when we think about courage, and you touched on it in the chat, I see a lot of words around fear. We need to get clear on, as we're making these courageous moves, large or small, what is the underlying fear? This will be part of a resource uh, I send you to, a TED Talk by, Trevor Regan, he's the founder of The Learning Lab. And what he has done is identify four universal fear triggers, struggle, uncertainty, attention, and change. And what he talks about is when one or more of these are present, we almost inevitably feel some level of fear. But the thing I thought was so interesting about it is these same four elements are present when you're getting ready for big learning. Think uh, athletic performance, uh, academic endeavor. They're also apparent. So it's important to recognize what are the fear drivers that are getting in your way and be able to name them as a way to take more control back. In other words, Mindset matters. How we think about things matters in terms of how we're gonna show up and how we're gonna be able to act courageously or not. Um, here's a big idea. You choose your thoughts. Your thoughts don't choose you. Sometimes it doesn't feel like that. 
But it's really important for us to understand that how we think about these courageous opportunities impacts how we're going to be able to embrace them or not. There was a ton of research done years ago. Um, Allison Woods Barnes out of Harvard. And what they did is they tried to get at the power of mindset in terms of performance. So they picked three situations that for most people cause a lot of anxiety. One was a timed math test. I can tell by your faces that causes some of you anxiety. <laughs> One was a singing performance and the other was speaking to a large uh, live audience. What she did for these three individual tasks was separate the groups into two. So her two control groups. The only difference was what they were told prior to having to complete the task. One half was told, don't be nervous. Just, you've got to stay calm which we've all experienced, right? What's the worst thing to say to someone who's in the fit of anxiety or fear? Just calm down. That was one of the instructions. The other group were told, this is so exciting. What an opportunity. Now, they were able to monitor all of these things. The singing, they could, man they could monitor the tone and pitch and breath. Obviously, with the math test, how many and how short of time, and they used audience assessments for the other. But what was really fascinating was the, without exception, the folks who were told get excited outperformed those who were told stay calm. In the psychology business, they call it an anxiety reappraisal. And, and here was the learning for us. It's easier for us as humans to go from a high anxiety, negative response, fear, anxiety, to a high, excuse me, high arousal, anxiety or fear, to a high arousal, positive response, like excitement, then it is for us to go from a high arousal, negative response, fear and anxiety, to a low arousal, arousal positive response like calm. Easier to make that switch. So I'm not saying that all you have to do is say, oh, I'm not afraid about presenting to the board. I'm excited. What I'm saying is how we talk to ourselves matters. Think about athletes with visualizations and mantras. As we try to engage our courage muscles more frequently, what we say to ourselves matters. So what I wanna do is give you a chance to play with this idea of the reframe, reframing your self-talk. Because most of us can make the commitment, but it's in that moment of decision-making when you have to say, I'm either gonna ask the question, I'm gonna call it out, I'm gonna set the boundary that we need to push ourselves over the edge. That's what the reframe does. So I'm gonna encourage you to think about what is your courage mantra? So go back to our video. Matt Damon just kept saying 20 seconds. It's just 20 seconds. So what is that for you as you think about your upcoming challenge? How do you flip it in order to increase your chance of success? I'm gonna give you a chance to play with this. So I'm gonna, we're gonna throw you into breakout rooms in trios. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to identify where you want your 20 seconds of courage. You've already done it, right? You wrote it down. So let, let your colleagues know. And then if you know what the underlying fear is, call it out. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, uh, fear of embarrassment, whatever that is, name it. And then I want you to take a shot at what are you going to say to yourself that's going to give you the um and the courage to go ahead and do it anyway. 
Now, I can see some of your faces on the um, video. So I recognize that this in and of itself may be a little bit of courage for you. And I appreciate that. So keep in mind, this is an opportunity to be vulnerable with your colleagues. We don't need a whole backstory. I'm going to give you 12 minutes. So you really only have about four minutes a person. Introduce yourself, acknowledge the discomfort, and jump into the work. All right, we all came to do it together. Um, I think there's real value in the conversation. So whether you're the one sharing or you're the one supporting the person sharing, that's courageous as well. So Barbara's going to set us up. You're gonna go into your breakout rooms. You'll get a warning at one minute, then we'll come back and we're gonna share some of those reframe courage mantras. Okay, here we go in the breakout rooms. Okay, we're back. Great. How was that? You look you look happier than when you left, so that's good. <laughs> um, I, my curiosity is getting the best of me. Uh, I wish we had a half hour to dig into some of these juicy statements. I'd ask that you pop some of them in chat. Uh, there's a couple of reasons. One, you kind of claim it. And it also is inspirational for others as well. So I'm gonna have you go ahead and start putting those in chat. Barbara's gonna help me monitor. Ooh, I love this one. I've done this before. Yeah. Perfect, right? How many of you are being put into new roles, new opportunities, and it all feels so overwhelming, but remind yourself, you've done this before. Yeah, love that. We talked about the balance of old comforts and new opportunities, right? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of personal scenarios were shared, um, which is interesting, right? It's not just about the office. I mean, this is really holistic in terms of where this works very much so. Um, yeah. Also a lot of talk about rejection. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's oh my goodness. A common theme. Kate had the courage to tell three strangers that she's pregnant. <laughs> Well, congrats. congrats. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Motherhood. That's a create that's a courageous act right there. <laughs> right. Uh, oh my gosh. Um the value outside of getting outside of your comfort zone, right? Everyone uh, a group talked about standing up yeah. for your decision and why you made it. Mm. Yeah. And recognizing everyone's not going to agree. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Ground. And then I think Brenda what's so important here uh going from trying to training and being more action oriented, right? You can talk about being courageous, but it's, it's really about your action. Ah, mm -hmm. yes. You know, it, it's, it's interesting. And we've talked about this, Barbara, you know, the, the core word for courageous, the Latin word means heart. And yeah. you've, in order to be courageous, you really have to dial into your heart and be present. Um, we can think about courage all day long, uh, but it's in the action mm -hmm. that we start to really get the reps that build the muscle. So this is definitely heart work we're doing today, not, not as much head work. So, thank you so much for that. Um, I'll look forward to seeing those, seeing more of those. So here's the point. You've identified where you want the courage, you've made the commitment, and now you even have a little trick to help you get over the hump. This is my last ask. We all know that there's value in articulating our wishes, our desires, our goals, putting it out to the universe. Research says 42% more likely to have something happen if you write it down. So I just ask that you grab your pen and on whatever you have handy, write down one or two things that you can actually do in the next, it says 14 days. I'm gonna be a little, uh, a little more prescriptive. I'm gonna say in the next week, whatever it is, make the phone call, make the appointment, have the conversation, ask the difficult question, but yeah. just get it funneled down to one or two things that you can do, however small, that are gonna move you forward. so important right 
because otherwise we've had a really interesting cocktail party conversation today. <laughs> I hope it was interesting. Um, but now, now's where the rubber meets the road. And, and it's important to remember courage is a habit, right? Mm -hmm. You, Brene, Brene Brown talks about, you get courage by couraging. <laughs> it's like swimming. You learn to swim by swimming. It goes back to that continuum. Why would we expect to be confident mm -hmm. in these bigger, bolder moves when they're new and different? So here's my, here's my, my warning though. I want you to set yourself up for success. I know that you're all the hard driving A types and going big is kind of how you roll. I'm gonna ask you to roll a little smaller. We do not need to swan dive off the high dive into the deep end for this courage thing. We do need to put on our swimsuit and get in the pool. <laughs> you don't have to get your hair wet. So be content and, and be uh, doing the smaller thing and doing more of them will start to build the muscle. So I just encourage you, don't look at what you wrote down when we finish today and say, well, that's not enough. A start is enough. Mm. Some of the things we've shared today are part of what I call the brave model. And this will be shared with you. You're gonna get some resources as a follow-up um, through Barbara and Nancy, uh, including TED Talks some books, et cetera. But I think this does a nice job just in terms of hitting on what we touched on today. First part, be honest. If you know what that fear is, if you can get your head around it, articulate it, it loses its power, right? It lessens it. Think about the reframe. How would you, if you were talking to a friend to encourage them, what would you tell them, right? What are the one or two things that allow you to step into action? The action doesn't have to be huge. It just has to be action. Vulnerability, discomfort, all of that. Price of admission, expect it. And then we have evaluate because it's an E, but what I really would like to put there is notice. If you're gonna to go to the trouble of being this intentional, trying things differently, doing some things more boldly and courageously, then please, Pay attention to what happens. What do you notice is different in terms of the small shifts or progress? Because that's how we make sustainable behavior change, right? We rinse and repeat and we pay attention. So this is part of the resources that'll be shared with you. Um, I also wanna just say how much I've enjoyed being with you and I'd love for you to think of me as a resource. Nothing gives me more joy than to get a LinkedIn message after some sort of engagement or conversation and have somebody say, oh, Brenda, I tried that brave model. <laughs> that reframe thing worked great. I also don't mind getting a LinkedIn message that says, I'm working on my reframe or I tried it. Didn't go quite as I planned. Do you have 15 minutes? I, I would be delighted. So think of me as part of your courage resource tools as well. Feel free to reach out directly or Nancy and Barbara know how to reach me. As we close out, on the continuum of competence, courage is in the middle. But I think I agree with Maya Angelou. Courage is the most important of all the virtues because without it, you can't practice any of the others consistently. And, and I would say you can't practice them authentically either. So it's worth the trouble to start playing with this and working on it. It really can make all the difference. Yeah. So it's, as we wrap, I would say, like if we've learned nothing this last year, I think we've learned that uncertainty is certain. Change is inevitable and constant. Um, relationships matter. And courage is, courage, courage is contagious. So just think smaller. Zero in on those first 20 seconds, and I think you're going to surprise yourself. So thank you so much. I'm going to turn it back to Nancy to close us out. But thank you for being with me. Brenda, thank you so much. That was uh, fantastic. 
And, uh, you know, I also love that as you we're building that courage muscle and courage is contagious. I also say that confidence begs to be followed. So um, in, in the action oriented and the building momentum is so important, but thank you so much for being here. We're so excited that we finally got you here um, uh, after five years and for leading us today, <laughs> helping us really understand the difference between you know things like confidence and courage and, and the importance of reframing and being mindful of our self-talks.